Hey guys, welcome back to Red Mug Music. I'm glad you could be back with me today. Actually, I'm glad to be back today. Uh, I got my second uh, vaccination, my COVID vaccination, uh, over the weekend, and I got real sick from it. I had chills. I ended up really sick yesterday, and I just was not able to make my video and have it release on time, which is usually Sunday, so sorry about that. But I'm back, and I'm good. I feel great much better than I did and I'm fully vaccinated so I'm happy about that uh, but uh, I want to continue with the Duran Duran ranking uh, series that I've been doing today we're covering my favorite uh, Duran Duran album so far hopefully it's going to be beat out by Future Pass which I don't know I doubt it will be but it's going to be Notorious. Notorious is absolutely my favorite album. Notorious came out in 1986, and, and it's there. It's Duran Duran's fourth studio album, and that's not including uh, Arcadia. That would have been the fourth if it were under the Duran Duran label, but it wasn't, so it's going to be Notorious. This is after uh, the, the Duran Duran split up. John Taylor and Andy Taylor went on to play with Power Station, and, and Roger a little bit, and Nick Rhodes and Simon LeBond, and Roger a little bit, uh, split off and did Arcadia, which Arcadia wasn't a part of the original ranking that I had in my second video on this channel, but I will be covering uh, Arcadia, so Red the Rose as well. But Notorious is uh, the album where the band got back together minus Roger, he was exhausted, he was done. And Andy, he was ready to go on and do other things and and take a new direction and do a solo stuff. And so they got back together, and it was Simon LeBon, Nick Rhodes, and John Taylor. And I kind of think it's, it's my favorite configuration. I do like my second con favorite configuration is going to be with, with Roger Taylor. But uh, I really liked the Simon LeBond, Nick Rhodes, and John Taylor. Because John Taylor and Nick Rhodes are the creators of the band anyway. They're the original two members that put Duran Duran together. So you got your original two plus Simon LeBond, which is absolutely necessary, or it's not going to sound like Duran Duran. But anyway, this is my favorite album. It came at probably just at a perfect age when I was just really excited about Duran Duran. I loved everything I was hearing. And, and Arcadia went over really well with me. And Power Station, I was a kind of a fan of. I, I, I bought the album. I did enjoy it. And I did like it. But it definitely wasn't as good as the Arcadia album to me, personally, my opinion. So anyway, we're going to cover uh, Notorious Song My Song. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this album and how this album ranked in your ranking in Duran Duran. I'd love to hear from you. But before we go on, if you haven't subscribed yet, if you're new or you just haven't done it yet, go ahead and do that. I would appreciate it. It's the best uh, way you can uh, support any YouTube channel. It's just by subscribing. So I really do appreciate that. All right, let's get on with the album, Notorious by Duran Duran. Okay, the first song on Notorious is called Notorious. And this is, I love the way the song starts out. I, I, I think it's a, a very cool. It, when, the, when the music starts, it's absolutely pure funk, filled with so much energy. And it's, it's really super exciting. And one of the fun things about it, it has Niall Rogers playing guitar on this, uh, on this song. And I just, I just like the strumming. I like the way it sounds. I think he contributed out of all the guitarists. I really think I kind of like Nile Rogers the best. Uh, I think he blended into Duran Duran more than Andy or Warren. And I think he just did a really good job of just kind of gluing it all together. And I, I like Rogers. I think he did a really good job. Um, I love Simon's lyrics. I think just, they're truly amazing. I just, I just like Notorious. It's a really good start. And then song number two is called American Science. Um, so we still have these horns. The horns are kind of, uh, they kind of show throughout this whole album. And I am usually okay with horns, but I think in this album, horns were uh, done really well. And as American Science, I think it's a really good number two song. And it's a really fun song to sing to. 
So based on Warren Cucurullo, this is a really fun fact about this particular song, which I went back and listened to it. I'm like, okay, I hear it. Andy, Andy Taylor plays the first solo in this song and Warren plays the second solo in this song. So I'm not exactly sure if Andy had played it all the way through and, and then uh, they just decided not to use the last solo or if he just quit before they got done recording the song and Warren had to fill in the holes. So this is the one song where Warren and Andy Taylor play on it together. American science. Okay. Song number three is called skin trade. This is another favorite song of mine. I I love it as as the number three song, another great funk groove, Simon singing in falsetto, which a lot of people compare to Prince. Um, the funny thing about it, as much as I like Prince and as much as I like Duran Duran and as, as much as I like the song, I never exactly made that comparison. I really hear more of a David Bowie, uh, in the song than Prince, you know, I guess I don't just think Prince is the only one that sings falsetto. I mean, falsetto is kind of used by a lot of music or a lot of vocalists. So I just didn't make that connection, but I love the arrangement in skin trade and the usage again of horns. And I love the heavy drum beat, uh, very nice transition to the chorus and then back out of it again. Skin Trade is such a good song. Okay, track number four is called A Matter of Feeling. Uh, this is a really nice change of pace track with really good uh, lyrics. And I love the key, the key change that uh, going into the chorus. I really like when they do stuff like this. It, uh, it's got a nice melodic sound to it, Matter of Feeling. I love the, I love the harmonies. And you could hear there's several guitar parts layered. I don't know if they're tracked in or if they're done at the same time because you kind of hear maybe Andy or Warren or whoever it is. And then Niles, you know, doing kind of like a rhythm thing. I I really like this. I like the multi-layered guitars. Uh, The plucky sounding guitar throughout sounds a lot like Nile. um, But those runs could definitely be Andy. And the reason why, I mean, if you know who's playing guitar on any of these songs, I mean, I was able to identify, you know, a couple of these, but even when you talk to the band, you know, in interviews, they're like, we're not sure who played what. So, and I'm, I'm looking at the notes uh, for, for this album and it'll say, you know, Andy played guitar, Warren played guitar, uh, who else? Andy played, Nile Rogers played, and Warren played. And but it, usually it says, you know, Andy song number two, song number six, song number nine. It doesn't do that because I don't think anyone really knows who played what. But you can kind of hear it and tell. Okay, song number five is called "Hold Me." I love the great. Uh, I love the drum intro going into this. It has a really nice drum beat. It's very heavy. And I, and I really enjoy the pre-chorus, uh, the guitar is mixed way low. So it makes me think it's Andy and they just mixed it in really low. Maybe, I don't know, but I'm not sure if it's Andy or not. It, it maybe that's just the way they wanted to mix this particular guitar, but I just think it's mixed in really low. Hold me is not my favorite. I mean, it's probably, you know, at best a pretty okay song. I mean, I do like it and I think it fits really well on this album. And I think it's wonderfully placed on the album. So I like it. And I don't know if you knew this, but a lot, some of these songs are actually named after Hitchcock movies, just like vertigo track number six. Um, this is one of my favorites, uh, song openings on the album. I really like the way it comes in. Um, and I think vertigo is a really good Simon song. Uh, lyrically vocally but i think the music is is fine but there's no real hooks nothing that's you know that's really catching my ear so i really think this is more of a a simon song that's why i think it's more of a hymn song because we're really just listening to him um so the vocals carry the song and i love it and and when you really listen to the guitar i really feel like vertigo was more of a warren song i don't know if you know specifically uh, which guitars played on which song comment down below. I'm not going to pretend like I know. I just like music. I listen to music. I'm not a historian. You know, I, I, I don't really, uh, care as much. I just like the music and I want people to enjoy what they're hearing, you know, but I like throwing a little bit of 
information about the album, as much history as I can, but it's really the music that I care about. So if you know more about the history and the making of this album, I would, would love to know. Song number seven is called So Misled. Uh, it's got that fade in, which I really like that. Another great drum intro. Uh, it's real funky. Another great usage of horns. Uh, I wonder if they used horns because they were missing some of the band. I don't know. I, I don't see why. I mean, they had really guitarists. They had uh, Steve, is it Ferroni on drums? He's good. He's really good. Just very heavy, powerful drummer. I think he did a really good song. But So Misled, again, very melodic verses, but, but a very simple chorus. And the bridge features, you know, this very heavy drums, but overall a, a great sound. So So Misled is one of my favorites on here, too. And another favorite, one of my favorites is Meet El Presidente. Um, another dr- big, you know, big drum intro. They featured the drums quite a bit on this album to not have Roger. And you know Roger would have done just as a, a good of a job or even better than Steve. So I don't think it was because Roger was gone and they had more ability because that's not the case at all. I love John's bass on me, El Presidente, and Simon starts with his you know, very sassy vocals. This is definitely one of my favorite choruses uh, on the album because they switch over to like it's double time. And I think it's, I, I just like when they do stuff like this. It's a very underrated song, even though it was released. I don't think it did that well. Uh, but it's just a great arrangement and very well done. I, I, I just love the beat of this song. I think that it's really, really good. Song number nine is Winter Marches On. Again, this is the kind of music that just really draws me into Duran Duran. I would still be a Duran Duran fan without this kind of music, but I definitely, like I, like I said in my previous video, I'm here for this. This is my kind of thing. It, and... To me, the song, it does sound like a very slow march. And I know it's called Winter March is On. And it's got the sleigh bells. So it sounds like a, like a slow Christmas march song. I'm not really sure. But I want to also mention, and I've talked about him before, uh, Bittersweet Machines. He does cover this album, or this song particularly. And I'll, I'll put his information in the description down below. If you want to listen to any of this music, I think, I think Bittersweet Machines did a fantastic job with Winter Marches On. It's, it's, it's a song that I've listened to over and over. But I think there, it's a great performance by Simon going from, you know, he's going from this quarter note singing to a much more like drawing out of the notes in the chorus, constantly changing his vocals from one verse to the next, giving the song some variety for such a simple song. I mean, it's just like he's it's just good. He, he, he goes from singing like very simple to a lot more complex and it, he's changing it up throughout the whole song. And I think that gives it such a good sound. And I, I love Winter March is on. It's one of my favorite songs on this album. And, you know, it, it, the funny thing about this album is I never realized there's only 10 songs. It's, it's, uh, there's so much content and so much variety on this album. I, I feel like it's like a 12, 13 song album, but it's just 10. It's only 10. And every time I see that, I'm like, it's such a short album. It's very strange how I just never think about that. But, but song number 10 is called Proposition. Uh, again, more heavy drums going into a more like a rock theme. I love how they stop there in the album in like a rock song. I would guess it's probably Warren playing on this one. And I love the pre-chorus. I love the harmony in the chorus. I love the bridge. And it just has very heavy guitars and a very nice solo proposition. It's, it's really good. And the thing about this album, and that's all, that's all 10. The thing about Notorious is it has one particular sound. Usually Duran Duran has more than one person working on, on the, the production of an album, but this album, it's just Nile Rogers and Duran Duran. It's just their collaboration producing this album that gave it a particular feel and sound. And I really think this is a one-off. This was really no other album like this. I really like Notorious better than Rio. And the rankings that I have do not reflect as probably maybe just a little bit, but don't really reflect what my favorites are because my favorite album's not Rio. It's, it's notorious. And I think I, 
like Liberty better than I ranked it. So, I mean, I really th- hope that I rank these albums based on the actual quality of the album and not have anything to do with what I think. But, you know, you got Steve Ferroni, Andy Taylor, Nile Rogers, Warren Cucurullo, and you got some people playing horn. There's a lot of there's a lot of backup singers on this album. I just really think they just kind of did something different and they experimented and I think it paid off. I really, really like this album. And I, th- I just think whatever feel or idea that they had just really came across and it came across throughout the whole album. It had a really good start, really good transitioning, you know, from one song to the next. It never felt like a song was out of place. It stopped fine propositions, a fine way to stop. You know, I mean, I don't really know what else I would have put in for the last song. Maybe swap them or pro- proposition and winter marches on. I don't know. It just, this depends on, you know, what you like, but I love Notorious and I ranked Notorious as the Duran Duran's second best album. Before I go on, who's heard of Halloween Horror Nights that they do in, uh, I know they do it down here in uh, Orlando Universal or Universal Orlando. Who's heard of that? Comment down below if you've ever been to a Halloween Horror Nights it's uh, this year it's his 30th terrifying year um which is bringing together the stories and visions of the world's most notorious creators of horror uh it says you'll want to bring a friend so you'll have someone to cling to someone to hide behind and someone to panic with there's haunted houses uh there's scare zones there's merchandise entertainment attractions and of course there's a lot of food you know they they've upped their game on food and drinks and and things like that but if you're in, interested in that you might want to uh check out Holly Carter uh she can get you booked for Halloween Horror Nights I think it would be a uh, really super fun and it's already started even though it's a Halloween event Halloween here in central Florida it lasts a long time it's a, it's it's almost bigger than Christmas so if you're interested in that, just check out Holly Carter. She knows how to get you here, and uh, I guarantee you're going to have a lot of fun. I'm not going until October, and uh, I can't wait. I think it's going to be super fun. But So anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram at Redmug Music, also on Twitter at Red, Redmug Music. And uh, be sure you stay tuned. Uh, make sure that you subscribe because next week is going to be we're going to cover the number one uh, album that I ranked for Duran Duran, which is Rio. But then after that, we're going to talk about Power Station. We're going to talk about Arcadia and and all these different other bands. You know, so if there's a particular band or an album that you would like for me to go over, I would pre- I would prefer to just hit one album and not a not a you know a, a band in their entire catalog. I think it'd be a lot more fun to just kind of mix it up. So just comment down below which albums you'd like for me. And I've already got several people already do that. So they're already in my head. But I wanted to finish the Duran Duran first and then eventually start mixing this stuff in. So anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. And I will see you guys next time. (laughs) 